Joining us now is Alexis Haynes. And for the record, that, I mean, that was beautiful to me. You just came out here and said you shouldn't have brought me out here oh. while you were talking <laughs> about my kids. And I, I think that just highlights how your priorities have changed yeah. over time. How, how long have you been sober now? December 1st, 2010 was the last time I used heroin. <laughs> And so I, I was alluding earlier to how we, we're not going to solve this crisis that you were yeah. embedded in in totality, but each individual has a chance. And here you are, a shining example mm -hmm. of turning your life Thank around you. from the time when, you know, a $10,000 a week Had habit. Wow, yeah. If you're spending $10,000 a week, you can get anything you want. Yes. But if a pill on the street costs 80 bucks mm -hmm. and heroin costs five or 10 bucks, mm -hmm. What is that well, like? Not quite five or ten, but yes. Well, but I don't, and I the don't know. But, but tell me about is, that. Is, tell me about how that yeah. how that switch occurs. Where mm -hmm. you know what you feel like maybe you're in control because it's a prescription medicine. How does that switch actually occur? Yeah. So the two things that that I think are are really important to talk about is one that your tolerance goes up significantly. Mm -hmm. So I started using just one oxy or one um, Vicodin or one oxycodone and that didn't do it for me anymore. It didn't numb the pain. I had a history of really severe sexual um, early childhood trauma. My parents divorced early, a lot of addiction in my family. I mean it was like the perfect recipe for self-medicating right. uh, when you don't have the resources to heal from that trauma. When was the first time you decided, you know what, I I'm going to, I need more and more and yeah. I'm going to I'm going to start using or try I'm just going to try heroin see see what happens here. It was pretty here. much immediate. So the first time that I was um, offered an oxy, I fell in love. I mean that mm. was that was the end for me. And that um, I told myself, you know, you're a smart girl, you'll never go to heroin. You'll never use dope. Um, that's a dirty drug. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that the majority of my suburban friends who started using oxy with me were then using heroin much right. faster than I was because they didn't have the financial means to continue with an oxy habit. So now I had a resource to right. using heroin. It was readily available and I started smoking heroin. My um, addiction progressed really quickly. So I started um, using pain pills on and off when I was 14. By the time I was 16, I was a regular user. By the time I was 19, I got sober and I'm 26 now. And I have a feeling that your family plays such a huge role in your continued sobriety and it your really motivation. Does. I'm so lucky. My husband is so supportive. We are each other's, you know, like biggest. We root for each other all the time. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been on, um, when I was first dating Evan, he was opening um, Aloe, which is the treatment center that he and his business partner, Jared, own. And um, together with the help of Bob Forrest, we have made this program that's, that really is so helpful for young people. That's kind of what we specialize in. We have a um, professionals program, but we really specialize in treating young people. It is so important. It is um, needed. And, um, you know, we work in the, in the insurance industry, but there needs to be more nonprofits helping the opiate epidemic. That's well, what I'm working it, on right it, now. Kudos to you because what the sad reality is when you throw out these statistics and you know that so few people are getting the help they need. Yes. And you guys have such a unique relationship because you very much understand everything she's been through right. and the two of you together, I can only imagine that support network. Are you finding that more and more people are at a loss for seeking help or now that we're more aware of it, that it's that that you're finding people more and more willing okay it's this is bigger than me i need help i would like to think that society as a whole is more understanding of the opiate epidemic because it faces it it in the face of so many millions of Americans and their families, but it's not. In America, I think for the most part, even though I'd like to say that, you know, we're gonna end the war on drugs, which is not a war on drugs, it's a war on drug addicts, that we're gonna really take a look at this opiate problem and that we're gonna make progress in not in locking up and institutionalizing right. drug addicts, but instead dealing with the mental health issues. We need this. 